In lesson 4-4, we'll be talking about simplifying fractions. Um, writing fractions in simplest form, we can talk about um, our equivalent fractions. And equivalent fractions are where two fractions are equal. So if we talk about the fraction 1 half, uh, there's many different ways you could write 1 half, um, like 2 fourths. 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half because it means the same thing. Um, we have 3 sixths, and we have 4 eighths, and you could say 10 twentieths would be equal to 1 half. So all of these fractions are equal. Um, the simplest form of this fraction would be 1 half, which is right there. Um, so when we talk about simplest form, we're going to reduce it all the way down and factor out any common numbers that are common between both the numerator and denominator. So again, when we think about common numbers, um, we're thinking about yesterday's lesson with the greatest common factor um, and working that way. So write 12 45ths in simplest form. So again, we can use our L method here. So we have 12 and 45. And we're going to factor out all the common factors between 12 and 45. Well, looking at these two numbers, um, I know that 2 will not work. Um, but 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 4 plus 5 is 9. So I can factor out a 3. Um, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 3 will go into 45 15 times. Uh, the 3 goes into the 4 once, and then there's 1 left over. And the 3 will go into 15 5 times. Now, the 4 and the 15, um, I can't find a common number that goes into both of those. So I am currently finished with um, using the L method. So the greatest common factor there was 3, and my new fraction is actually right here. So 12 45ths is equal to 4 15ths. So the L method um, is not only telling us what the greatest common factor is, but it is also telling us what is our fraction in simplest form. Uh, another way you can show this work is by writing it uh, 12 over 45 and then just dividing by the greatest common factor. Whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So if you divide both top and bottom by 3, again, you get 4 fifteenths. Um, so doing it this way works pretty well if you already know what the greatest common factor is and you know what to divide by. But if you don't know exactly what to divide by using the L method, uh, can help you because you can just keep going to different levels and keep showing the work. So either this would be acceptable for work or this would be acceptable for work. But you would have to have one or the other um, to show that you did all your work. So write 40 over 64 in simplest form. So again, I like using the L method, 40 and 64. And we're going to take out all the common factors. Well. These are both even, so I'm going to start with 2, and I get 20 and 32. And they're both even again, so I can take out another 2. This is why the L method works well, because you don't have to know the greatest common factor in order to get started. So we get 10, and we get 16, and I have an even number again, so I'll keep going with my 2s. So I have 5 and 8, and I can't go any further with the 5 and the 8, so 40 over 64 equals 5 8. And if I wanted to know what my greatest common factor is, it would be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So if you looked at both these numbers and you knew right away that the greatest common factor was 8, you could show me the work another way, and you could say 40 divided by 64, divide both top and bottom by 8, and you would get 5 eighths. And this would be acceptable for work also. Uh, but if you don't know that 8 is the greatest common factor, I highly recommend using the L method and you will get to a simplest form fraction. Marbles. In a bag of 96 marbles, 18 of the marbles are black. Write the fraction of black marbles in simplest form. Well, if 18 out of 96 are black, we write the fraction 18 out of 96. And we want to know what is the simplest form there. So let's use our L method, 18 and 96. Okay, and looking at these two numbers, they're both even, so I can start with 2, so I can go with a 9, and 2 goes into 9 four times with 1 left over, so I have 16. 2 goes into 16 
eight times. So now I have a nine and a 48. Well, I know nine is divisible by three, so let's check 48. Four plus eight is 12, and 12 is divisible by three. So I can factor three out of both of these. So three goes into nine three times. Three goes into four once with a one left over. So three goes into 18 six, six times. So now I have 3 and 16, and nothing goes into both of those, so my answer is 3 sixteenths. And then, um, since this is a word problem, you want to say 3 sixteenths are black. So you want to include your label there, and then this would be your answer, and all of your work is right here. Again, if you knew what the greatest common factor was to start with, if you were able to determine that uh, the greatest common factor is 6, you wouldn't necessarily have to use the L method, but you do still have to show me that you're dividing both top and bottom by 6 to get 3 sixteenths. So you can either use the L method to show your work, or you can do it this way over here. Um, again, the L method is nice because you don't have to know the greatest common factor to get started. 15 inches is what fraction in simplest form of a yard? Okay, well, I have 15 inches, and a yard is 36 inches. So I need to simplify this. Um, so let's go ahead and use the L method again. So I have 15 and 36. Well, I know 2 won't work. This is odd. So will 3 work? 1 plus 5 is 6, and 3 plus 6 is 9. So I know I can factor out a 3. So I'm going to get a 5 here and a 12 here. And 5 and 12, I can't do anything with that, so it's going to equal 5 12. And since I'm looking at units, since this is a word problem, I'm going to say 5 twelfths of a yard. And that would be my complete answer. Now again, if you knew that 3 was the greatest common factor to start with, you could show your work in a different way. You can divide both top and bottom by 3 to get the same answer of 5 twelfths. So again, you can use the L method to show your work, or um, this way over here where you're dividing by the same number both top and bottom. Uh, but one of the two ways must be shown for your work. Remember the L method we were using for greatest common factors. We're already, already used to doing it that way. Plus, we're going to use the L method for other things down the road. Um, so, again, it's, it's important that we're using or getting familiar with that L method. In example 5, 35 cents is what fraction in simplest form of a dollar? So, 35 cents um, would be out of 100 cents, and the dollar is 100 cents. So, we want to get that in simplest form. So, go ahead and use the L method, 35 and 100. Um, since they both end in either 5 or 0, we can use a 5. So we'll get a 7, and 5 goes into 10, 2, 0, so 20 times. And so 7 and 20 are the numbers that I get, and I can't go any farther than that. Um, so 7 twentieths of a dollar would be my correct answer if you want the fraction out of a dollar. Um, so this would be the correct way to show all your work and display your answer. Again, if you wanted to show it another way, you could have 35 over 100. Divide both, sorry, it looks like addition there. Divide both top and bottom by 5, because that is your greatest common factor, to get the same answer of 7 over 20. So again, you have to show your work one way or the other. Um, if you want to watch more examples on finding uh, fractions in simplest form, you can check out the online tutors and also check your step-by-step -step homework helper.